welcome back to Lawrence Plays Kerbal Space Program. So in the last episode, we went up, did a bit of um, playing around um, around the moon, flew around up there, got some valuable science, and that let, let me unlock some uh, some more rocketry bits, like this massive Roman candle here. Um, and so we're going to have a play around with that and have a look at some of the other um, options we and some of the, and uh, have a look at some of the other missions I've unlocked or requested. So the first two are these these two here, where. Um, these, these four tourists wanted to go on for an orbit around the planet, so we're going to take them up, have, uh, give them a, a quick spin around the planet, see what they think of it. Then, uh, radial map parachutes. Um, I've got some of those, so we might test these on the way back down if we can get the um, if we can get all these numbers to add up. What do I need to do? Activate the part through state. Yes, okay. All right, I'll, I'll try and trigger those parachutes at the right time. The heat shield is the one I've been struggling with because it doesn't seem to work properly, um, but I'll try and keep an eye on that too. Terrier liquid fuel engine I don't have, so I'm not going to be doing this one. But the, um, hang on, I thought I had one for these fleas as well, that's why I put them on there. Okay, apparently I haven't unlocked that one, maybe maybe I ran out of missions available to me. Um, I'm not going to be using the radial decouplers up there, I'm just, going to, I'm just looking for these little fleas. Okay, in that case, let's take the fleas off and put slightly bigger engines on instead, because I'm, a, I'm aware I'm slightly low on the um, hammers will do. I'm slightly low on the Delta V for this mission, given that I want to get some towards it and, and come back again. Right, there we go. 3,090. Yeah, it'll probably do. So let's find out. So, here we go. Here goes nothing. That does not look like a very stable rocket. I mean, the thrust is all dead up the centre, so hopefully it'll be alright. My biggest concern is it sort of wobbling and snapping in half as it goes up. Still, only one way to find out. I hope these tourists are all ready. Let's go for it. Lean the other way. There we go. So far, so good. Slight gravity turn, that's going quite well. There go the uh, hammers. Kickback still going well. I have a feeling this is going to take me much, much too high, even though I'm trying to turn as hard as I possibly can at this point. It's just too big and heavy. I might have to put some wings on this and try again. Let's have a look. 148. I mean, yeah, 148 is too high. We'll see if we've got enough fuel. For circularization burn. This. Do I need to uh, Yeah, about there. It's the 88. So that will do. But it's more burned. It's more burn than I've got. Okay. Back to the old drawing board. Let's get some aero. See if that'll allow us to. These are just fins. Winglets are. Oh, these are actually controllable, I believe. So if we put four of these around the rocket down here, that should give me a lot more control over what it's doing. So I want all of these to go at once, and those, and that. Right. So that should allow me to pull the pull the rocket over a bit more, well, a bit more, and therefore get a lot more of the speed horizontal rather than vertical. So I don't I don't need to go anything like as high as 150,000, but I do need to be doing a lot more horizontal speed. So, well, take two. Action. Yes, already I can feel I've got a lot more um, control over it. The trick is just to not overdo it so that it falls over. <laughs> I think this is doing better. It's hard to tell, to be honest. I'm getting a lot more heat, which suggests to me that I've got a bit more um, horizontal velocity. Yeah, there we go. It's only 120 this time. So if I stick in a manoeuvre... No, not that one. Let's just delete that stuff again. Stick in a manoeuvre here, right on the apoapsis. Now, again, that requires more fuel than I've got. Oh no, that's just dropped quite a long way. Maybe if I'm a little bit more stingy with the fuel, I'll just use most of it. No, I'm not getting, not getting to orbit. Still, that was significantly better, but not enough better. Maybe I should actually listen to the numbers written here, which say um, the 3,400 for getting to uh, an orbit, and that's 3,100. It's just not, not enough. Okay then, let's forget these wings. They helped a bit, but what will help a lot more? Get rid of these as well. I'm just having two more of these as my, um, okay, these should go higher up for this. There we go, 3,700. In fact, I'm not even going to need these because they're all going to go off at the same time. 3,700. It does amaze me how, I mean, I've put in, what, these are probably four of those hammers stacked on top of each other. So I've massively increased the amount of fuel available here, but it's not actually increased the amount of, um, up. <laughs> it's not increased the amount of delta V by quite as much, by anything like as much as you'd expect. Where's there, uh, I mean, I know I've got 
a lot more stuff in the second stage, but still. Oh well, all of that goes at once, and yeah. This one, this one will easily make it, I believe. And then we can get on with all of the sort of the making money from the tourists and finding science in space. <clears throat> Anything in there? Yes, actually. I should I should get one of these next time when I um, before I take off. Right, coming up. That's a bit my biggest worry here. Is that all this extra boost in the first stage is just going to get me higher and higher and higher than my initial insertion and not actually get me that extra horizontal speed that I really need. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much so. It's got me up to with my Apo at 380. That was probably silly to be honest, but oh well, let's find out what we can do with that. Right, I now actually have enough Delta V to do this at last. No, that way, put it back in a bit. So for about 100, will do. <laughs> so it's going to use most of the fuel I brought with me, but I don't think that matters. It's um. That's what it's there for, really, isn't it? Let's have a look at this materials bay. Good. <laughs> Bring it down exactly the right place. Light it a little bit again. Yeah, 90 is fine. Give me a nice elliptical orbit, that's much more exciting, isn't it? So, up to here. Hopefully, that noise means I'm now high enough that I can do another science. Yes, there we go. Now, what I'm. How long have we got? One minute. Okay. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do an EVA walk, flip down, and get the um, science out of those things and bring it back up. I know you need a scientist in order to actually get the, to reset the science units and therefore get them able to do more science, but I'm optimistic that even this pilot chap is going to be able to go down there and just rip all the stuff out of the boxes and uh, bring it back up with them and hide it in the inside the, um, the command capsule, get all the data out and the useful and interesting stuff. <clears throat> How are we doing? Oh, I need to be burning. It was rather badly timed. I was too distracted playing with the science boxes to um, actually start doing the uh, the manoeuvre. There's nothing interesting up here for these things, is there? No. Okay, that's nice and close. How's it looking? 94,000. Perfect. Good. Get rid of that now. I said we can get rid of that now. Good if I could click on it. There we go. 94,000 metres, that's good, that counts as orbit. So now, as we see here, we've got all these things, so that's done. Now, let's see if we can manage an EVA. Um, <laughs> this is really nerve wracking. It's not going very fast or very far, but still, somehow, it's. No doubt, it's absolutely terrifying the tourists seeing that pilot floating, drifting around outside the. Uh, Outside the windows, but you know, like a black herbal is the biggest one. Phew. Right, uh, yeah, let's start experiments and then get back in again. Right, all that remains to be done now is to have a bit of a um, drift around the planet so the tourists feel like they've got the money's worth. And in fact, I want to get back round to, to here before I do my um, re entry burn like that because, you know, it feels like a bit mean to not give them even one full rotation around the planet. So, let's do that. Point the rocket the right way. <laughs> These things are very manoeuvrable. I mean, I know it's reaction wheels, and reaction wheels are a real thing and all that, but I gather that reaction wheels are not anything like as effective as they are in this game. But then I suppose that's what makes it a fun game. You're able to, if, if you had to plan your rotations ages in advance and then just leave them running, it wouldn't be anything like as much fun. Right, pointing in the right direction, so I can basically just warp straight back around here now. I'm not going to watch this for 16 minutes while it uh, drifts slowly around the planet. It's only a one second burn to deorbit as well. That's not going to take long at all. Quite literally, it's not going to take long at all, because it's one second. <laughs> okay, I'll rephrase that in a way that actually sounds meaningful. Oh, it's only 46 metres per second of delta V. That's not going to take very long at all. In fact, it's only going to take about one second. There we go. And yes, that's brought the periapsis down into the atmosphere. 31,000 meters. I'm not, yeah, it's not going to make it back up again from there. I suspect I'm going to have another nighttime landing. And by the looks of it, not only is it going to be nighttime, it's also going to be on land. Although it's very hard to tell on this side of the planet because it's so dark. We'll find out as we get down there. I, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. If you're coming down at 5 meters a second under parachutes, you, you can deal with them. Um, Either you, could, you can deal with a landing on water or land in more or less the same way. It's just slightly bumpier and you don't get seasick afterwards if you land. 
Any useful observations? No. Still counts as just upper atmosphere. I'm sure there are some things that are different depending on what biome you're floating over. Did I bring any other science things? Oh, yes, there's a barometer. No, nope, that one's boring. That one's boring. Can't run these again because I've pulled all the science out of them. So I'll just do the usual thing. Burn up the last of the fuel in a re-entry burn. <coughs> Should be fairly soon. I mean, we're in the atmosphere now, just as you can tell by the bar across the top here. It's, well, barely in the atmosphere, but it is. there is a little bit of it out there. Enough to do that. So, yeah, let's burn off what's left of the fuel. Then we can get rid of that part of the ship. And we'll start messing around with temperature again. Temperature readings. Nope. Still boring. Still boring. Okay, let's have a think about the parachutes and things. So, I need to open the parachutes, the, ra the um, radial parachutes, above a thousand. That's fine. The heat shield. I need my altitude to be low. Oh, I missed that one again. I keep forgetting about that at the right times. Okay, so it's the radial mount parachutes. I need to get down to 9,000. Uh, 9,000 meters and 200 meters a second. That's fine. Just watch for the um, drogue chutes to be ready first. I have this vague idea that as long as the surface speed is less than the height divided by, what, 110? Yeah, 10. Then you're probably going to be okay. So at the moment I've got 1,800 meters a second and 25,000 meters. So I, should, should, I think I should be alright. I'm slightly concerned by that wobble. Um, it's not floating in quite the quite the way I'd like it to. <laughs> and I haven't got the... The reaction wheels aren't powerful enough to uh, to make it do so. But I think it should be okay. Especially as the wind is starting to die down a bit. That's the drogues. Get the speed below 200. Which is taking a worryingly long time. In fact, the speed has stopped going down. Maybe I should have put more drogue chutes on. Oh dear. <laughs> Let's open the chutes as well. There we go. Now I can open those. That's the radial parachutes tested. <clears throat> And also I've got all the parachutes open while I'm still... I'm not sure where that came from, but it was all the rest of it hitting the ground. That's the parachutes opening. There we go, five metres a second. That's fine. Let's get this down as quickly as we can. So hopefully I'll make a decent amount of profit out of these tourists. Um, and the whole point of doing this is to get the money, of course. Uh, so that should get, allow me to save up enough money, I hope, in order to upgrade some more of my um, just general systems. Uh, crew reports... Uh, 200 meters up, let's do an EVA report as well. Back in again. Yeah, so the object is, objective is, as I say, is, is to, to uh, make enough money to fund the rest of my um, missions to go off and get more science. So the hope is that this will have generated enough money to upgrade the any any module, any parts of the space center that need to be upgraded uh, for things like, well, the patch conics that I got earlier, um, or maybe for bigger and heavier rockets. So I'm going to do a moonshot and, and try for a moon landing because that's going to need well more um, and also to co and um, and to cover the cost of the actual rockets themselves because building these things isn't definitely isn't cheap I spend a lot of money on that and uh, and I can't really reuse anything at this point it all just sort of falls away and goes smash or explode there we go safely down so, um, yes yes spacesuit not necessary I know crew report crew report okay recover that so yeah, we get these little smatterings. I'll say little smatterings of science. Actually, that's 82. That's pretty good. Where did that all come from? Um, oh, the material studies are quite valuable. That's interesting. So I definitely need to start taking those with me when I go a bit further afield, even if I don't actually bring the capsules back with me. Um, and then and then the smaller numbers from doing the sort of the various little reports that were relatively easy. But the point is, I also get a little bit of money back from doing the um, from bringing parts back down to Kerbin. But well, in this case. It was a long way away, so I only got 40% of the value, and to be honest, it was only going to be about six, just over six grand's worth anyway. So there's not a huge amount of money back from, from rescuing these things. But it does mean I, but I have made a profit, significant profit actually, um, on, the, on, on the mission in general, uh, because I took the tourists up. So that means I can now think about it, buying more of these things. Um, I don't want those, because those are just the tiny ones. So those are for building satellites and miniature things that you just want to, you want to keep them very very light um, and you're not too worried about efficiency you're not as worried about efficiency or raw power these are the big fuel tanks so these are probably worth having I've got I've got heavy rocketry so that gets me that big these big engines but no big fuel tanks to go with them interesting so I probably need to buy this one in order to get the big fuel tanks like that one yeah so we've got an 8 to 16 and a 32 so of course I'll just use a 32 oh, and an 800 oh that's 
Okay, that's the smaller one. That's for the smaller scale engines. So, so it's these ones I want. These are the, the big ones for those big engines. I'm not sure how much I care about these at the moment. When I've got loads and loads of science to spend, yeah, sure, I'll get that sort of stuff, but not at the moment. RCS, that's quite useful when you, if you want to try and dock two things, which is one of the challenges I've, I've got, and I can't remember if I accepted it or not. Exploration, that's the... Oh, yeah, that's quite nice to have. There's too many things I want, that's the problem, and not enough science points to actually get them. Okay, miniaturisation I don't care about. This making automated things that just sit up there and watch. And then I can't afford any of these even if I even if I had the research points. Um, it's 160 which I, so I can't get that anyway. And and my science labs aren't advanced enough for that yet. Okay let's get the fuel systems to get these big tanks and that'll, that'll allow me to build something that I don't know, looks a bit like a Saturn V probably. Um, and we all know Saturn V is ideal for moon landings. But hopefully it'll work for moon landings as well. So while I've got the money sloshing around, let's upgrade. Wow that's expensive. Okay let's upgrade that. I need to spend all, nearly all my money on it. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. I'd like to start rescuing Kerbals because you get extra, I think you get extra astronauts for that because you get to keep them. Um, but at the moment, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to need to research the um, the RCS thrusters before I, before I trust myself trying to bump two rockets into each other in space and res rescue somebody. That's, I mean, I can get there and do that sort of thing, but... That was the one I thought I'd taken, but hadn't, so let's take that and get it done. I'm not going to do that one. I think the next thing to do might be to go to Minmus, actually. It's not that much further away, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's it's only 70 delta v, 70 meters per second of delta V further away. What's that number mean? Oh, but it does... Oh, no, plus another 340 for the plane change, because it's at a silly angle. Okay. Um... So it's going to take a bit more Delta V to get there, but not horrendously so. So, um, And then once you've got there, it's so small that getting into orbit and even landing is relatively easy. So that might be manageable. Yeah, let's let's try and get to Minmus, and then when we get there we'll see how much fuel we've got and whether it's worth trying to land. I don't think I'm going to have any of, my twin, any of the twin bore engines still on my ship by the time we get to Minmus. They'll have gone by then and uh, been replaced with smaller and lighter ones, I expect. Okay. Right. Scratch that. New ship. I wish I could take um, a scientist with me. Maybe we should make a ship like that. <laughs> um, I mean, that might work, especially if I put a heat sink, a heat shield on the bottom of it and gave it its own parachutes. Or that's going to be the tricky part, giving it its own parachutes. Let's not throw that idea away completely. Um, I've got the ma massive one. There we go. That massive one now for all my fuely needs. What I'm thinking, yeah, let's try that and that. And then, can I build this up from underneath? I'm not sure. I won't let me put that anywhere. Hmm. I don't want to build a multiple layer rocket, <laughs> a multiple pod rocket. There and that there, I suppose. And then if I put a pair of radial mount parachutes on each one. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm not 100% certain this is going to work, but it seems worth a try to get that one. Reliant seems to be the best one of these. It's that gets, so yeah, that gets me almost 1,800 meters per second. The little one gets me 600 meters per second. So it must just must just have a much lower ISP, and it just can't produce use the fuel as efficiently, which is a bit of a shame because for this sort of long haul, I'd rather have um, a small engine. A small light engine that with with much lower levels of thrust and bimble out there slowly, but apparently I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, what I do want actually, if I'm going to try and land, where are my small tanks? That, and then let's have some stability. This is where the small light engines will be useful. Let's try that. I'll just land on the end. Oh, actually no, I don't have some landing legs. I do. Let's put some landing legs on as well. And on Minmus, this isn't as important, but it might as well. Then, zoom. There we go. Mouse wheel always seems to go in the wrong direction. Can I start these closed? Yes, I can. Oh, yeah, there. Uh, adapt. And where is it? Uh, no, 60, 30, yeah, 32. That's the one. So two of them. And a skipper on the bottom. So it's 27, 37. 40. 40 meters per second so far. That's not bad. 
and then we've got three of these on as well, just for, um, I'm going to want a decoupler for that as well. 5,000 meters per second, that sounds like a good number to me. Up here I'm going to whack in some um, nose cones, I think. <laughs> Give me a bit of aero. Um, so is there a, yeah, that's a decoupler. I'm going to have to think very, very carefully about the staging and, and probably do it all individually once I've got all the bits up there. Uh, aero, 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 aero. There we go. Aero. And there. And on there. I feel like I should put some sort of cone on the top of here. Maybe on the parachutes. Not that one. That one. Okay. That looks all right, I think. So the general idea is, with this rocket, we've got these three massive solid fuel boosters to do the initial launch. Um, I may or may not power on this engine in the middle. We'll see how, how we're doing for temperature and acceleration. Then, once they're gone, I've got this big liquid fuel engine to do the bulk of the um, transfer. I reckon that... So that should be enough to go from orbit, hopefully, hopefully to get into orbit and to go to Minmus. Then we ditch that. I've got this one for circularising, getting in, in around Minmus, all that sort of crazy shenanigans. Then, maybe even part of the landing. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes. Then I've got these three up here with quite a lot of fuel available between them for doing the for coming into land, and that's why they've got legs as well. And then take off again. Um, it's just occurred to me that this shouldn't be a fuel tank; it should be a science junior, which I'll keep using while I'm out there because I've got two of these capsules on the top, so I can put a scientist, a pilot in one, and a scientist in the other. And hopefully, that'll get me everything I could possibly want. So I'll whack the science junior in there. Still on threes. I think that will still work like that. And then this underneath there. Like that. What? I don't know why it's put those massive great fairings on. If I just. Oh. <laughs> yeah, only one of those. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Oh, I put it underneath there. That's not, meant to, not where it's meant to go. Ah. <laughs> the joys of trying to do something 3D on a 2D screen. Okay, so. That goes in with them. So they all trigger together, but I'll keep the throttle at zero. Then I lose those. Then I lose that. Then I fire this engine. So those are in, those are all around. Oh, engine. Use that. Use those engines. Right. What I'm going to need to do to get this down because these don't even have don't have any engines of their own, which is a bit of a shame. I'm going to need to get into a, just dropping it into the atmosphere orbit, and then disconnect this one. Then I can parachute it in. Then and, and pull back out again. Then do that one. Then get out of the out of the orbit, bring this one down to land. Or what if I just kept them together? I think keeping them together should be all right, actually. Let's forget that detachment thing. And I've gone massively overkill on the parachutes in that case. But if if I'm able to, if I was able to bring in the tourist bus as I did with the uh, with the chutes and things I had, this should be absolutely fine. I don't have any drogue chutes. Let's get rid of the let's get rid of these bottom chutes and replace them with drogue chutes. They might be the wrong ones to get rid of, but. Let's not put it over the oh, I'm on three threes. Okay. And science as well, of course. So I've got the science junior in there, which I'm going to ditch when I'm bored of it. Definitely need to take a goo pod, because I've not done any goo around Minmus or anywhere up there. And I think a thermometer and a barometer would be good too. I can see I'm gonna spend half my time trundling my scientists around from the front of these to the back of these and back again to uh, investigate everything, but never mind. <coughs> Right, let's call this Minimus of the question mark on the end. I think I might already have used that, but I'm, yes, I have. But I'm slightly more optimistic about it this time. <coughs> Got bigger rockets and a better chance of landing. So, should we give it a try or should we save that for the next episode? Nah, I've not been going that long. Let's give it a try. Ooh, that's wobbly. <laughs> I hope that doesn't matter. So one of the things I've done here, and done even in the centre, I wonder if it's wobbling. Right, wobbling is scaring me. Uh, throttle set to zero, that's good. Let's light the, um, the big sticks. Ooh, that's falling over. Actually, bits of falling over is probably not such a bad thing, as long as it doesn't get too steep. Also, we seem to be going for a polar orbit rather than an equatorial orbit I aim for. Um, I don't know what angle Minimus is at at the moment, so <laughs> I don't know if that matters. Alright, let's start to try and grab to 10 a bit more. Seems to be going okay so far. Not no, remotely high enough. Full throttle. Let's try and head out a bit more to the east. Oh, this is all a horrible waste of fuel. 
Maybe I should have fired all the engines from the very start rather than just using the outer ones. Actually, this isn't going badly now. I'm yeah, pretty happy with this, I think, because I'm getting a nice low flight path. Cut that off. Yeah, it's not dropping. So I think I'm, yeah, I'm basically out of the atmosphere. Okay. Minimus target. Maneuver. Obviously need a lot more speed. Okay, so that's the absolute bare minimum. That's just going to get me up so I don't crash back into the planet again. Um, and that's in only a minute. So I think... Oh, how's my inclination? <laughs> Pretty ridiculous, if I'm being honest. That's a lot steeper than it needs to be to get to Minimus. Oh, well. It's, it's not ideal, but we'll see if we've got enough fuel. Ooh, this is heavy. I can feel it being difficult to move. <laughs> it needs to be burning. It needs to already be burning, really. Maybe I should have... Um, rigged the system up so I could have fired these engines at the top as well and use them for takeoff, or at least for this point, this part of the journey. That might have been a bit silly, although I suppose it would mean you would be able to ditch the tank sooner as they ran out of fuel. Maybe I'll try and work on that for, um, something, work on something like that for a future mission, have a massive tank underneath the bottom of it, with the engines all clustered around the top. And with small enough engines that might be alright. Okay, that's, yeah, that's sufficiently circularised, we are now safe from crashing back into the planet. So I'm going to need to have a manoeuvre, well, it could be on either, either side of the planet, really. Over here, the descending node, let's try and bring the two into um, alignment. What? Was I pulling on the wrong handle? Yes, I think it probably was. Or maybe not. I'm very confused. That should have been me adjusting the angle. Let's start again. That manoeuvre here, do that. I should just adjust the angle flying around the planet. Here. But it's pulling it out as well. Maybe it's because it's such a big adjustment. I was hoping for just a plane change. And that has got me to a Minmus intercept, or is it a moon intercept? Can't tell, let's see now. No, that's a <laughs> not, no, that's a leaving curb in sphere of influence. That's not what I want to do at all. That's a um, lunar encounter. I mean, is that gonna help? Oh, shush, unless you can tell me what science I can do. Stop making that blooping noise. <laughs> I'm not missing something obvious on the screen here, am I? There's not a button here that's telling me about my what science I can do. No, I don't think there is. Right, that was a really bad launch, which isn't helping things at all. Um, that trajectory is just going to slam me straight into the planet. I sort of want to try and do the launch again and try and get a better orbit, because this is a horrific amount of, what's the word I'm looking for, um, angle change required. If I just raise the Apo out to the right height, like that, it's about a thousand. It's not too bad. Something there. That's just straight out of the system. Straight out of the um, straight out from Kerbin. Don't know what's happening there, but it looks exciting. Um, <laughs> not particularly useful there. Okay, let's try again. So I need. To, I definitely need to do the rotating thing. But also slow it down. Pull it back in. Stop telling me the angle now, which is um, a shame. Oh, two degrees. Okay. Nine. Boom. Is that a minimus? Is that a leaving the? No, that's leaving. Leaving the, uh, leaving the world. That looks like a Minmus encounter. A fairly close one at that. But it's a two and a half thousand metres per second boost. And that's changing engines there and there. I think, even though I've spent all that time thinking about it, I'm going to revert back to the vehicle assembly, put some stabilisers on this damn thing, so I can try and, try and get it to go in the right direction on takeoff. So I've sort of a set of these around it, for starters, so it doesn't wobble anything like as much when it's out there on the stand. Oh, no, that's supposed to be on top. Uh, get back on there. Get there. Move the whole thing down. Like that. And some aero as well. Let's give it some little wings on the, on the boosters. Okay. That was a bit anticlimactic. Maybe I'll just speed through all of that. Take a scientist. Don't need an engineer. I think engineers are just for repairing things, and I don't really need to do that at the moment. Because uh, I'm just throwing everything away as soon as I've finished with it. Let's try that again. Uh, so it's still not in the middle. <laughs> right, let's try and do a proper eastwards. Um, no, westerly, even. Let's do a proper westerly um, gravity turn this time. That's good, that's the way it's supposed to lead, although perhaps not quite so much so soon. Uh, <laughs> I think this is going well. Isn't that graceful? Right, that's my Apo 54. It's not too bad. Good and low as well, which um, I think is ideal. Cut that. 
I get a little... Actually, no, I need a bit more height. I do need more height on this side as well. Okay, that'll do. And I want to circularize the orbit. A bit more. Yeah, that'll do. So it's another minute of burn. That's, sounds manageable. We can do that. How's that? 81 and 78. Oh, 81, okay, that's fine. <laughs> that. Good. So, minimus again, to try and get there. And this node, I want to pull down. 3 degrees, 7, 3. Okay, so that will get me. Yeah, it has pushed it out a little bit again. That's fine. That's much more manageable. That's a mere 321 meters per second this time. And I've got more than that left in here, so that's, that's good. Once I've done that, I'll be on the same plane as Minmus. So I'll then think about doing a boost out to get to the planet, to get to the moon itself. Uh, Minmus is a moon, not the mine, but it's a moon. That's what a 12 second maneuver. Okay, so we've warped in here. Oh, in fact, what I should be doing while I'm waiting, Bob the scientist should be. Um, <laughs> I think Jeb might still be manoeuvring the rocket underneath him. That's kind of unfortunate, because I don't really want him to be. Can you reach that from there? No. From there. There we can. Collect data and restore. Cool. Can't board that one. Can't, can't climb up to the other one. Okay, we're going to have to fly. Stop spinning. No, don't go over that way. What are you doing? Bit. Right, how do I rotate him to be facing the direction I want him to be facing in so I don't get confused? I can I rotate that way? I probably have to do. Where's the way back in? That's on this side. Grab. Okay, just board then. <laughs> right. Good. So that was um, that was successful. I've re rejigged the materials bay. I should have rerun it while I was out there. <laughs> now I need to go out of there again. No, that, that won't have got me the data. All right. Let's do it again, Bob. What if I go to just, how close do you have to be to reach it? That close. Oh! <laughs> I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Didn't get in the craft. There we go. Right. Those are very unnerving. Ooh, camera's gone free. Uh, that's better, actually, I think. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure what camera I want. Let's stick with the auto for now. Okay, so I'm five minutes out from the node, and I need to do a 12-second um, burn. Pull this round, pointing in the right direction. Stop turning. Go back to where I want you to. Come on. There we go. Okay, and now I can just fast forward until I get to about here. Okay, so we start the burn at T minus six seconds. That's the now. <laughs> it's too busy fapping with the camera trying to get a nice view of the ship. Okay, that's as close as I'm going to get it. Right. Now we can extend the orbit at some point. Oh, I'm doing the wrong way. I need to turn the mouse around too. Assuming I can. Extend the orbit out. Ooh, try for a swing around the moon. No, it's just going to make it worse, I think. It's going to make it harder. Oh, I'm doing that. No. You'll see. Right. Start again. From, from about somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. We go faster and faster and faster until I get out as far as my that's obviously the wrong place, but that's fine because the first step is to get it out the right distance. Then just drag this around until you get your counters to be in about the right place. Which I don't think I can on this orbit. It's getting worse. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this is okay. There we go. That's a, um, a Minmus encounter. It's not a particularly good one, I don't think. But the thing is, Minmus is so small that it so it's really small, so it doesn't have very much. A gravitational field, so you have to get very, very close to it to get, have any chance of actually being captured by it. But that looks okay, actually. That'll get me the encounter, and then from there I can, once I've done the first burn, I can tweak and get really cl and get close enough to actually come in and think about landing. Uh, so let's first line up the craft with the uh, new direction I want to fly it in, which is a bit random. I must have nudged one of the other controls as well. Shoot. Uh, in fact, let's have a look. Can I? 23,000. 85. Okay, 85,000. That'll do. Um, and that's about there. And I 
32 second burn, but I will need to change engines part through it. So that's going to make things tricky, but eh, I'll do the main one and then we can always fix it afterwards. Right, so 32 second burn, so I need to do it at T minus 16. Start slightly early, because as discussed, I'm going to need to change engines. Do you see the um, expected path growing as the engine flares? Here we go, fire to fuel, fire the next one, uh, fire the next one. Let's reorient it. 32 metres a second is still quite a lot, so I'm going to do that as well. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, so on our current route, we're going to get past 222,000 away, which is quite a lot, to be honest. So, the sooner I get in another manoeuvre, the better it'll be. That is now going right through the middle of it, which might be fine, I'm not sure. I don't know if it should only take 160 metres per second to get into a circular orbit. There you go, peri of 8,000. That'll do. <laughs> it's a tiny fraction of a second. Might as well do that, no reason not to then, in that case. But it's 21 minutes away, so let's speed time up a bit again. Actually, let's have a check of the science while we're drifting alone in deep space. Anything here? Don't know if that's the same one as I got earlier, but I'm not sure. Nothing new from there. Oh, something from there. No. No. Okay. Let's get the scientist out and reset everything. <laughs> and then we have him climb down here again. Later. And then we have the joy of um, flitting around like, I don't know, like what. Whatever it is, it's slightly nerve-wracking. And I'm getting better at this. Okay, only another 16 minutes to wait. Ship is much easier to point in the right direction. Or at least it moves much more quickly. I don't know if that makes it easier or not, because I overshoot like that. Yeah, much easier to, to, um, to readjust. Yeah, there's much less weight hanging off it. Oh, perfect. No, nothing interesting there. What about EVA? No, nothing interesting there either. Obviously done all of that. Right, let's jump to here. Several days later. I oh, know, it's, yeah, two days into the mission now. Three days. <laughs> Three days, four hours. Can I do any important new science? No, this is still high over curb and it's the same place as far as the, uh, as far as science is concerned. Okay. Oh, it's left click, is it? Oh, here. That will definitely be a new place. 6,000 metres. Um, I hope that's 6,000 metres above the surface and not 6,000 metres above the centre. Looks like it's... Yeah, that does just clear the surface. Okay then. <laughs> 62 science. Nice. Goo feels right at home here. I'm glad. Still in a vacuum. Still cold. Good. Give you a report. Good. Collect data. Move. Restore. Right there. Collect data. Move. Restore. This is um, Bob Kerman earning his, earning his keep while he's... Uh, I'm about to do take data. Earning his keep on this trip. Whoa, where are you going? Bump. Oh dear. No, don't drift away from the spaceship. That'd be bad. Ooh, past it, and hopefully. Ah, too heavy with the uh, boost key there. Get back in again. Right, there we go. Okay, let's see. It's an hour away to get to the periapsis. So I want to do another set of readings from low, low in, in low orbit over Minimus. So let's walk. Actually, let's not do that yet. Let's think about slowing this down to circularise the orbit. Like, to about there. What's that? That's 230 metres per second. Okay, that's about a quarter of the fuel I've got with me. That's um, in this big tank. So as you probably remember, this tank is basically just for getting me there. And I've got plenty of fuel in there for this. I've actually overestimated for once. And then, in theory, these little ones are there for landing and getting back. I think that should probably be okay. So this is a what? A 10 second burn. That's not much at all. So first, in fact, let's get in position for this. I'm going to walk to here and then I'll do another round of science. There we go. Is that safe? Perry is at 6,000, therefore it must be higher. And I don't think there are any massive mountains on Minmus. So I think I'm okay skimming around at this sort of height. Okay, science, science, science. It's been an amazing mission for science. The amount I've got on board now is literally hundreds. I might actually be able to build some enormous rockets after this. Why can't I select to get an EVA report? There we go. 
Right, that's all the data. Boop. There. And safe and board again. Right. Well, you know what's coming next, don't you? Next, the next thing I need to do is land on this um, chilly little. Well, I think they described it as looking like pudding. So <laughs> that's going to be the next thing to do. Let's get rid of that. However, I've been playing for quite a while now. So just to keep you all guessing, I'm going to save that for the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me next time where, fingers crossed, everything going to plan, we shall land on Minmus and then fly back again. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.